Let's start off with the big framework you're mainly known for, Solid. You told me before it was actually created a lot further in the past than people might think. So can you tell us about like the conditions of like when you started it, why you started it? Yeah, um, 2010, um, getting back in JavaScript was amazing for me. I had been doing all this .NET programming, um, a little bit of Ruby and PHP before that, and it was fine, but there was something really awesome about going back to just building with HTML in a sense in JavaScript and single page apps were like that all over again. And I found a JavaScript framework that I really liked called Knockout.js. And I don't know what about it appealed to me. There's just something weird about its model. It, it had these things they called observables. It's funny because these days we call those signals, but it basically let you write your state in this way that you could just update it and it would just make those exact updates on, on the DOM. And it was really cool because it didn't really care about much else. It was just all based around these observables. And I don't know, it was something clicked for me. I'd always made, tried, when I first got into programming, I really wanted to go into game programming. And I spent a lot of time playing around with DirectX. That's how I got into .NET and whatnot. And something about Knockout, funnily enough, pulled out a different old influence of mine, which was programming circuit boards. I'm actually a computer slash electrical engineer by tr trade, not computer science. And there was this whole idea of if you apply to change, it would apply everywhere at the same time, like when you're modeling hardware. And I just knew instinctively how to program that way. It was just something that always made sense to me where your data itself was also like declarative is the best way to put it. It wasn't just your like you UI, but your data. Anyways, jumping forward a bunch. It was a cool concept. It was a bit messy. There's lots of problems with Knockout.js. I'm not going to hide those. But if you fast forward for so-ish years, no one was doing this anymore, mostly because of React come out at that point. And they were like worrying about state changes and all this is really complicated. Just forget about it. We've made it so it's good enough to just re-render everything, right? Like instead of worrying about stuff ping-ponging all around your app and stuff changing and not know what's going on, we'll just wipe it out and start over again, essentially. And the funniest thing is this is an old thing in graphics, actually. There's an idea of something called retained in immediate mode. And React was immediate mode. It means you don't keep the artifacts around from time to time. You just replace them as you go. Where retain mode is about mutating an existing model. And in game programming, almost everything at that point had gone to immediate mode right? It had some benefits like constant frames per second and all, and all those things where retain mode could be incredibly performant when nothing changes, but it was unpredictable what would happen when stuff did change. So there's a lot of philosophy or ideas already behind these different approaches. But as it turns out, the DOM itself is retained mode, right? You have this model that you update and mutate. So there is this kind of discrepancy of trying to apply something almost like a game engine on top of the DOM because the models, they have to abstract, like they're not one for one. And when React got popular, it irked me a bit that there's a lot of claims about performance and all these things. And I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure stuff like Knockout that leverages the retained mode approach are more performant. And personally, I just like the model, the whole class components we had back then and the whole re-render data. Sure, that fits fine for some people. But for me, I gone really, I really like that thing from Knockout where I could just go create an observable, create some state create some derive state, and then just put it in my UI and only those pieces update. There's just something that just felt natural to me. I admit at that time period, I didn't think anyone else was on the same page. To be fair, uh, the other popular frameworks, like Angular even, was like, look, we don't have special data. You just update normal JavaScript objects. React state looks like normal JavaScript objects. I didn't think anyone was going to bother trying to do this kind of special data. And the problem was Knockout.js. No one was really updating it anymore. So I was like sitting there, I used it professionally at my work in production. We had these Knockout apps and we built our own patterns on top of Knockout to make it more predictable. Old Knockout, as I said, there was problems. It would ping pong all over the place. And the rendering was not very performant. Every time you added, they had these weird data bind things. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but whenever you added a new template to the page, it would have to make the HTML elements and parse for these data bind attributes and then apply them and then apply the transform. It, it was not particularly performant. So when I stepped back, I was like, yeah, React got a lot of things right. 
both from tooling perspective, things like JSX, things that allow us to like not to do work ahead of time, not parse through these big DOM trees. And also just like unidirectional flow, all those kind of philosophies about control and expectations of how your app should be. The early days of, of JavaScript on the web were ones where we really had no set way of doing stuff and we were just doing jQuery imperative type stuff. As the need got greater, we tried to build frameworks around 2010, but we didn't really have an idea of what best practices are, right? And the very first big React talk was rethinking best practices, right? This is the kind of thing that I realized React had a lot of really smart ideas in terms of bringing predictability and consistency. And it was easier to work with on teams, but I still like the other model regardless. I was looking at these things and around 2015-ish, I was like very clear that Knockout wasn't going to get updated. I was looking at some other projects like uh, a technical Knockout or whatever. And I had this problem. I had Knockout and production code in my work. And I was like, maybe I could just make a lighter weight or alternative, like maybe something that used compiled templates, updated the tooling and kind of get like knockout back again. And that would become solid JS eventually. I didn't work. I've worked on it like here and there, like little ideas, played in little examples. And then I finally was like, okay, it's on a private Git or sorry, actually Bitbucket, I think. But at a certain point about mid 2016, I just made a commit where I just like made a repo called framework. And I just put in these ideas that I had. And at that point, I, I didn't have stuff like JSX. I had templating that looked a bit like views or angulars, like S if and S for. I had, I was just playing around with these ideas, but I had a system where the signals were in the forefront, so to speak, where the reactive data was right there in your face. It wasn't hidden. Even view at that point tried to make their stuff look like plain objects. So I was like, I, I'd found a pattern that I liked from my work. And then I decided, okay, let's, let's give it a shot. To be fair, again, I said no one would like it. So I just spent a couple years there playing with it in my own little private repo. And at a certain point, I was like pretty proud of what I'd done. And I was like, okay, I want to prove that this approach has wings. So I started looking for online benchmarks. There had been some in the past, like these funny like circles, demos and stuff. There's lots of ones. There's a uh, Ryan Florence remix, React Router had actually made this DB mon database monitor one that showed like reactively fast because of the way it could diff the whole page of data like multiple times a second. And I just collected all the benchmarks that people used and was like, okay, does this have wings? And that actually forced me to actually open source the project because in order to actually put the thing uh, in the benchmarks, I needed, I needed to actually have it released. That's what I did. And that was April, 2018. It was shortly after I'd made the decision to switch to JSX. I actually had come across a different library called our surplus and no one, it's not a particularly popular one, but they had actually used signals with JSX and I, it blew my mind. I was like, this is what I wanted to do. I almost just dropped my project and was like, can I work with you, Adam? Yeah. Uh, was the name of the maintainer. Let's do this. And he was like, I'm very busy with my startup right now. I, I wanted to add all these features because I was really into proxies. I was like, in my head, I was like, I told you no one wanted declarative data. So I was like, maybe there's a way that I can make proxies like the baseline and then people won't feel it like the difference. But the trick, the hard part about making proxies, the baseline is he had a very smart heuristic where he'd look at the JSX and look for any place where a function was called. And if a function was called, then it would know to like make that a reactive expression. If I added proxies, then every single property access in the JSX would also become a reactive expression. So there, there, there was changes that had to be made. I started realizing that when I took my React patterns and people would, you know, access data at the top level in the component, like destructuring props, like it would cause whole sections of the tree to re-render randomly because it's a little bit complicated, but there was a bunch of like issues with reactivity and nesting and this unpredictable ability basically. And I was like, okay, no, I needed to s solve this. It, it took a little bit of time playing around with it. For the most part, I wasn't too worried about components because I was a big fan of web components. That was like how I thought the future was going to be. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to focus on the reactivity. I'm going to use web components for the components and let's go. And that was basically the start of solid. No one really cared that much. To be fair, we started winning at those benchmarks and not just the ones that we'd expect to win, but even the ones that were good based on diffing like VDOM. Like the proxies were the key. I realized that using proxy data diffing, we could 
also have performance where diffing was required. Things like Brian Florence's benchmark and I guess coming into 2018, I, coming to the end of 2018, I was pretty happy that I'd come up with a pretty performance solution that worked for me. And if no one else liked it, who cares? But the big changing moment for the project was actually October 26, 2018. I remember this date because that was a huge day for us. And it was when Dan Abramoff came on stage and introduced the world to React Hooks. Because when that came out, it was like being in the eye of the storm. If you solid had JSX and signals, it basically looked like modern React with React hooks. And I didn't think anyone would like these patterns, but when they were like, here, use state, use memo, use effect, it looked identical uh, to what we were doing with solid. And I was like, wow, uh, I did take the JSX from them, but they're actually telling people that they should like mark and make their data look declarative. And bigger shock for me at that time was even though it looked the same, it didn't work the same. I was like, I actually think what we're doing might be better. Like they, they simultaneously pointed people in a direction where the uh, kind of way you authored components looked the exact same, but the mechanics behind signals are really powerful. And I wasn't the only one who noticed this right after that announcement, Rich Harris was like, started going, oh, we could do something like this. And he's like, screw it. We're a compiler. And that was what triggered Svelte 3. And also within that same week, Evan Yu from Vue was like, we're going to expose our reactivity system. I said, Vue had signals under the hood the whole time, but they didn't let you use them. They were like, just use these option data objects that they saw the hooks and like, oh, we can just use our reactivity directly, like the old knockout days, basically. And this changed everything because suddenly Solid was not only top of the benchmarks from an ergonomics DX standpoint, it looked like the best practice for how you should author UI. So it, it was it was definitely, that's when it put on the map. I started writing articles um, on Medium trying to teach people about these concepts because there are differences. In React components, we render. And in uh, Reactive Framework with fine grain render like Solid, they don't. Um, it's only the expressions where there are signal reads. Um, I'm not sure how familiar the audience is with this at this point. It's funny because outside of the React uh, ecosystem now, these ideas have almost completely taken over. But back in 2018, that was not the case, or even 19, or even maybe 2020. People were like, oh no, you're bringing the magic back. It took a couple years with hooks for people to go, oh, yeah, this is more tricky. I used to say that was like the line. When you started having to use ref for things that were not DOM elements, you've known you've crossed this line because once you can have to stop putting stuff in state because you're worried about re-renders happening or to share state between different effects or different calculations, that React has gotten away from those class components. So yes, it re-renders and that part's simple, but you're no longer can ignore the way your components update, which was the React's original selling point. And given that, my perspective has been that it's actually easier with a reactive model to see what updates because it's like it's right in front of you. There's no outside of the hook. It's this hook depends on this, it updates. There's no like stale closures. 